It's no secret that PVM is expensive. It's very much a spend money to make money activity, but some items, well, some items were just too expensive. Yes, I'm looking at you, Hardix Bull Tips. You were too expensive. Jagex listened to the community and provided us with well thought out boss drop tables again and again. In this video, we're going to talk about the impact these new bosses have had on the cost of PVM. So whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. The majority of the items that will be mentioned in this video already dropped from existing bosses, but because of a higher player count, the demand simply rose while the supply stayed constant or perhaps even became lower. Take Hardix Ball Tips as an example. These are used to create ammo that increases adrenaline gain, which are simply becoming increasingly more popular amongst rangers as people are becoming more aware of how powerful these bolts really are. Insert your Protox Merchant comments right here. Now, these ball tips used to only really be dropped by Virago, Raids Bosses, Solak, Elite Dungeons, and Araxor, and some of the group bosses I just mentioned are far less popular than other solo PVM content. Now, while Araxor is quite a popular solo boss, especially when you compare it to a group boss like Virago, which, you know, not that many people do nowadays, it doesn't really bring heaps of these ball tips into the game. I believe on average you bring like 19 to 20 ball tips into the game per hour, which is nothing compared to the other updates we're going to be mentioning in this video coming up. Now, I believe the conscious decision to try and reduce the cost of PVM started around the Rex Matriarch's release, and maybe even at Rack shows. The Rex Matriarch dropped a good selection of PVM related items, including Onyx Ball Tips, Grimy Toad Flaxes, Inert Adrenaline Crystals, Ancient Skills, Draconic Energy, Serenic Skills, and a few Super Potions. And this is a good start since this boss represented a mid level boss. But the real change happened with the introduction of the Elder Godwitch Dungeon, starting with Carapac. Carapac was quite a popular boss and dropped items like Hardix Ball Tips, Soul Runes, Cannonballs and inert adrenaline crystals quite commonly. Now, not only that, but he also drops Troes, which drop a selection of god wines, seeds, extreme potions, super potions, onyxes, runes, and these could also be obtained from the slay creatures, which also dropped Hardix Ball Tips and some other runes. In short, the supply of these items was going to go up. But that doesn't necessarily mean the items are going to go down in value, because let's single out soul runes for a second. The community was begging for these to be dropped more commonly from new sources. You don't obtain that many soul runes from PVM, you can barely craft a relevant amount when training the skill itself, and shop runs have a stock limit. Suddenly, there was a somewhat accessible boss that dropped soul runes in large quantities commonly. So why are soul runes one of the few items in this video that are still going up in value? After all, the Argolaisor and Croesus also drop soul runes. Well, I think the main culprit are the new City of Sintistan spells like Animate Dead, Smoke Cloud, and especially Insight Fear. And of course, the Fractured Staff of Armadale dropped by Karapak. Yeah, that rune devourer stick. Soul runes are an exception. With that being said though, the impact of the other drops that were now more common could be felt straight away. A trend that would continue throughout the entire Elder Godwitch dungeon series. The second boss, the Arglacer, was quite a special boss to be added to the game, and one of the only two bosses in the game that has a drop streaking and rage system. In short, the higher in rage and streak you have, the more of a certain item you gain per kill. This allows players who are able to streak the boss to obtain ridiculous amounts of items they weren't able to obtain before especially useful for certain Iron Man accounts. Drops include Spiritweed Seeds, which uh, basically crash to Oblivion, which are eventually used to get Spirit Weeds, of course, which are used for incense sticks and summoning potions and so on. Crushed Nests, which are used for Cyrodome and Brews, Sirenic Skills, used for Sirenic, most obviously, and for Elite Sirenic Repair Patches. Again, Hardux Ball Tips, Onyxes and Onyx Dust to reduce death costs, and Soul Runes, which are used for Vaughn Bombs, spells and so on. And finally, just like Karapak, the Arglacer also had Troves in tier 1, 2, and 3, which dropped Godwine, Seeds, Potions, Onyxes, Extreme and Super Potions, Runes, and more. We then have Croesus, being the third boss in the Elder Godwitch Dungeon series, and by far the least popular. Mainly due to it being a scaling boss, requiring team coordination, and perhaps not being as exciting as previous releases. The drop table, however, is a different story. Rare drops aside, Croesus has by far one of the most important and impactful drop tables in the game. Let's have a look at the drops. 
First of all, the Grimy Dwarf Reeds. These are used eventually for vulnerability bombs, super ranging potions, and extreme strength potions. Grimy Quorums. These are used for super strength potions. We then have Torstals, which are used for Siren Dome and Bruise, and for Overloads. We have Crystal Keys, which are used to open crystal chests, which allow you to obtain, again, Torstals. We then have Inner Adrenaline Crystals, which are used to create Adrenaline Crystals, which are used for Enhanced Replenishment and Super Adrenaline Potions. We then have Grapevine Seeds, which are used to grow God Grapes, which are used to create Wines of Saradomin, Guthic, Samarak, and these are used to create Super Zami Brews, Super Sarah Brews, Ranging Potions, and Super Guthic's Rests. We then have Cockatrice Eggs, which is quite the surprising thing to see on a drop table because the only way to obtain these is through Implings and cockatrices, and now you can get like 40 of them in a single drop from Croesus. So that's pretty good as they're used for summoning potions, which are then used for the purpose defeats. Limpret Roots used for strength and super strength potions. Mortmire Fungus, which are used for super energy potions, which are then used for adrenaline and replenishment potions. And of course, for food in your player-owned farm if you're feeding your Zygomites these type of mushrooms. The red spider's eggs are used for super restores. Again, these were quite expensive. Raw rock tails just trade up, making food easier to obtain for Iron Man and cheaper for main accounts. Hardix ball tips again, onyxes and onyx dust, and again, soul runes. And of course, finally, Croesus also has those troves, which drop those godwine seeds, potions, onyxes, potions, and so on. Quite the impactful drop table, and lots of these items have decreased in value. And then, of course, the final boss in the series, Zuck. First of all, we have the Alchemist key, a completely new key used on a new chest, which drops godwines and onyx ball tips. But it also drops Cave Nightshades and Poison Ivy, which are both used to create Weapon Poison++. Plus plus plus. You no longer need to grow them or go to those scavenged caves to obtain these, which is huge. During the entire fight, you also obtain Cannon Tines, which are used for Sticky Bombs and Super Defense Potions, Quarms, which are used for Super Strength Potions, Irrits, which are used for Poison Bombs, Anti and Super Anti Poisons and Super Attack Potions, the Wine of Saradomin is on the drop table, which is used for Super Saradomin Brews. The Wine of Zamrak for Super Zami Brews and Super Range Potions. Onyx Ball Tips, Hardix Ball Tips, Serenic Scales again, Onyxes and Onyx Dust, but no Soul Runes this time. And of course, those Troves, which drop a bunch of PVM related items. The reason I decided to go by some of the more important drops from each and every front is to give you an idea of how many items are being impacted by people farming these different Elder Godwars dungeon bosses or their minions in the fronts. It's very obvious that the Elder Godwars dungeon has had a massive impact and the majority of the items I just mentioned have plummeted in value with some exceptions like Weapon Poison++ plus 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 and Saw Runes. Onyxes and Onyx Dust are now much cheaper. Hydrix Bolt Tips are close to the price they were in 2015 literally six years ago. Onyx ball tips are now around the price they were in 2018. Overloads have become 10 or 20% cheaper because super attack and strength potions have plummeted in price. And the ability to obtain extreme potions has become far easier. Funnily enough, super defense potions seem to be going up in value. Sarandom and Brews have decreased in value quite a hefty chunk. Rock Tills have crashed in value. Adrenaline Crystals keep going down. And Serenic Scales are near their all-time lows. And there are many other items that have gone down in value because they are related to these items in one way or another. And the fact that Jagex has been taking steps and listening to the community is fantastic because PVM was simply becoming too expensive and something had to be done. Hopefully with future content releases, they can do the same by carefully taking a look at what kind of drops or items can be obtained through whatever they are going to be releasing, whether that's skilling or PVM content. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it interesting. If you did, leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.